Hello, students. Welcome to Unit 3 of our lesson in English, Men and Society. So first, let's try to understand and uh, identify the wants versus the needs. So whenever we talk about wants, it means that these are just your whims for you to have. Uh, not that important, meaning to say you can live without it. What about your needs? These are the essential essential aspects in life, something that you, you have to possess to achieve for you to survive. House, is it your want or your need? It's a need. Ring, it's a want. Lipstick, want. Chocolate, want. Football, want. Clothes, it's a need. <coughs> Ice cream. Want. Teddy bear. Want. Medicine. Need. Dinner. It's a need. If we are talking about food, but if you're on a diet, it's okay to skip dinner. But what is important is that you have food on your table. Necklace. It's a need. Want, it's a want. Water, it's a need. Now, there you have it, girls and boys, your wants versus your needs. Have you tried borrowing things from other people? Is it okay to borrow things for the sake of vanity? Is necklace, again, your want or your need? If given the chance to borrow this beautiful Diamond necklace. Girls, would you grab the opportunity? Take a look, a clo take a closer look of it. Our lesson for today is entitled The Necklace. Today you will learn to define unfamiliar words in the selection, summarize important points in the text, especially the elements of short story, critique a literary selection based on the following. Approaches, Marxist, feminist, historical, reader response. Explain the relevance of the selection to the historical context during which it was produced. And compose a short story that mirrors satirically what exists in real situation. In preparation for the reading, please research for the following. Marxism and feminism. How to Use Marxist and Feminist Literary Criticism by Reading Literature, Ideology and Gender, and Guy de Maupassant. I have given you the link as well for a short video clip for you to understand Marxism and feminism better. This is Henry René Albert Guy de Maupassant, born in August 3, 18, or August 5, 1850. Is a French naturalist, writer of short stories and novels, the greatest French short story writer. Again, he is Guy de Maupassant. For vocabulary building, for you to unlock word difficulty, please uh, open your book to page 273 to 274 and look for these following words. Pretty ver versus charming. Dowry, the wretched look of walls, tapestry or tap tapestry, pot of foo, frowsy, sphinx-like smile. Also words like antique, boutique, debut, SPA, mirage, charade, chaperone, bureau, monsieur, beret. Okay, so moving on to, to give you all the detail that you need to understand of this election, open your ECAS 10 book to page 262 to 272. I suggest you answer as well the sidebar questions and write them down in your English notebook. Also, please do not forget to answer the values life connection on page 273. Do this in your English notebook and show it to me or share it to me through my messenger. So what is the necklace all about? I'll give you an overview. The story is entitled The Necklace by Guy de Maupassant. It's all about 
the couple, Mathilde, and her husband, Mr. Losell, who lived in Rue de Martyrs and who suffered for 10 long years to pay for their debts over a lost necklace. The necklace cost them 36,000 francs, which was later found out to be a very big amount compared to its original value of 500 francs only because it was... Mathilde, the main character, who was not used to living a simple life, ended up a plain wife, cleaning the house, buying goods from the market herself, and has become a woman of impoverished household. Does she belong to bourgeoisie? No. She's a, she belongs to a lower class, a proletariat. Not so rich. That's why she cannot afford to buy fine clothes, and fine jewelries. The story told of contentment in life and being true to oneself. So for the short story mapping, you need to do this. You can find it in exercise 12 in your textbook. Who is the main character? You can cite other characters as well. Where did it happen? That's the setting. How did this short story being introduced? That's the exposition. What are the rising actions? These are the scenes, most especially highlighting the conflict. What exactly is the conflict? The highest peak of the story, the climax. Falling actions are optional because the modern plot is from climax down to it's ending a resolution right away. So you do this in your English notebook and submit it to me through Messenger. Now try to reflect on the following questions. With women, is there neither case nor rank? Explain why. Mathilde had no dresses, no jewels, nothing. She loved nothing but that. She felt mad for that. Why did she feel mad for the dresses and jewels? Especially girls. Do you love jewelry? and dresses as well? Did Madame Loisel have reason to be unhappy after her marriage or was her unhappiness a result of her character? Do you think Madame Loisel was probably a better wife during the days of poverty than during the days of prosperity? Would you say that one way it was better for Madame Loisel to have lost the necklace? Is it good for her? What do you think? Did it teach her a lesson? Understanding the theme of the story, check if you agree or disagree for each of the statements. Lying is acceptable in some situations. Should you always lie to save your face? Yes or no? Agree or disagree? Disagree. Life sometimes hands you cruel situations. The best thing to do when this happens is to keep your suffering to yourself and find a way to get by. Do you keep your sufferings and your worries to yourself? Agree or disagree? But do you know that a shared sorrow is of a sorrow? That's why we have best friends ready to listen to you. What do you think? Number three, material goods like clothing and cars are extremely important to being happy. But money can't buy happiness, right? But it definitely makes easier to be happy. Do you agree with this or disagree with this? Can you think of your own parents? Do they fight because they don't have enough? Most especially if, if their purpose is, the reason is finances. Think about it. Okay. So to critique a literary selection, the necklace. How can we look at this story from the feminist perspective, the Marxist perspective, or the reader's perspective? Let's try to understand feminism 
Feminism is the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of the equality of gender or sexes. Whereas in Marxism, in simple terms, it's a political and economic theory we're in a society has no classes at all. Whenever we talk about class, it means we have the poor, the middle class, and the elite. Do we have that in the Philippines? Which class do you belong to? Explain the relevance of this election to the historical context during which it was produced. During the, the writing of Guy de Maupassant's The Necklace, what was the social issue or, or, the, or the, the, the bias during that time? Is it in connection to that biases? Do you agree with Guy de Maupassant that women have no caste nor class today? Does this also apply to men or women? In feminism, again, it is the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of equality or of sexes. If we are to critique the necklace, feminist points of view, point of view rather, uh, women were not given the chance to be educated and be independent financially. Women depends that time on the writing of the necklace, they depend on marriage. Can you imagine that? For a woman either to be poor or wealthy, that is based on the capacity of her husband. As for Mathilde, she married a poor man, a working class man. That is why uh, during her marriage, she cannot afford to buy fine jewels or even dresses to fit her beauty because she's very beautiful. As Mathilde learns later on, women are capable of anything if they leave the fairy tale nonsense behind. That's the feminist critique of the necklace. Let's go to the Marxist criticism. Marxism, in simple terms again, is a political and economic theory where a society has no class. Before, the society was divided into two, proletariat, so to speak, the working class, uh, the poor, okay, and the, the bourgeoisie, the capitalists, they're the elite if they are garnering really good in the economy. Okay, so what does it say? If we are the uh, Marxist critic, what's the Marxist, Marxist critic of the necklace? It says, the story depicts on how the proletariat or the working class wants to be recognized and be part of the social class. Just like how Matilde really wanted to belong to the social class. That's why even though she cannot afford it, she went to her best friend and borrowed the necklace. And uh, for 400 francs, she would buy a beautiful dress to match that beautiful necklace as well. So here, for the main character, becoming a member of middle class and low class is a terrible thing. She cannot simply accept that she belonged to, she belonged to that lower class. So much as she wanted, she wanted to be in a social class. So because for her, being rich is the best thing in life. So that is why for the Marxist, Marxism advocate of that was Karl Marx. Uh, the, the classes, segregation of classes in the society must be abolished, so to speak. Therefore, equality be achieved. For the feminism, gender inequality should be abolished. There should be an equal right given to women and men in the society. Do you get it now? What about reader's perspective? How do you view the necklace? What do you think? You as a reader, how do you criticize or do your critique about the selection, the necklace? So for the upper class, it's like P. 
pure happiness for Mathilde. But again, she belonged to the lower class. So for Marxism, without or the abolishment of these classes would give everybody equal treatment. So what moral lesson in the story can you apply in real life? Should you wish to be somebody or not? Should you want more than what you can gobble? That means to say, do you wish to have something you cannot afford? But this does it mean, mean that you have to be contented for what you have? No room for improvement? Do you like it? What do you think? Or if you wish to be somebody, what will you do now? Push yourself to your limit to reach your goal in life and be better for self-contentment, for self-happiness, for you to be able to achieve your goals in life. What do you think? So with all these, what is important is you put, try to bear in mind, put this in your mind that uh, being contented is actually okay, but that should not hinder you from achieving what you wish for yourself. If there's this room for improvement, do it. Grab the opportunity. Be a better version of yourself. Then plan it well. If you wish to be somebody later on, do your best now. If you wish to be the best engineer, doctor later on, then work, work it out. Push yourself to your limit. Climb that ladder of success. Be the best version of yourself later on. That's the moral of the story. But for now, if you cannot achieve what you wish to achieve, then settle for what you can afford. Do you get the idea? Okay, so for evaluation, you will be doing a comic strip. Remember last time I told you to make an outline of a short story in a satirical way? So that, that was in preparation for this major task. This is collaborative short story composition. So in your mini task last time, as what I've mentioned, you have to um, identify any current social issue, think of an advocacy for a change, and make a satirical storyline or outline that subtly attempts to make a difference. This time, based on your group storyline or outline, you are ready to compose a short story the satirical way. It highlights or it should highlight any biases in the society. So your attempt is to promote your advocacy for a change in a humorous way through your short story comic strip. Remember, this task is in collaboration with social studies, science, CLF, and arts. So English concern is solely for you to be able to make a short story the satirical way. Okay. Now here, um, it's worth 50 points. Take note. The setting, it should be vivid, descriptive in words, and are used to tell when where the story took place. Characters, the main character are named and clearly described. Most readers could describe their characters accurately. For the problem or conflict, this is times two because it should be the main point of our lesson, the satire. It uses any combinations of humor, exaggeration, irony, and or ridicule effectively to, to expose and to criticize problems present in our society. Um, it is very easy for the reader to understand the problem and main character's face, the main character's face, and why it is a problem. Okay, and for the solution or resolution, so the solution to character's problem is easy to understand and is logical. There are no loose ends. For organization, the story is very well organized. So the beginning, the climax, the ending. So one idea or scene follows another in a logical sequence with clear transitions. For creativity, the story contains many creative sketch details. You can do that for, from the instructions of uh, Miss Maming or your arts teacher. And or descriptions that contribute to the reader's enjoyment. The author has really used his or her imagination. So use your wild imagination to achieve this. For mechanics, the story contains no errors in grammar, usage, or the mechanics as a whole. So total score is 50 points. So if you have any questions, feel free to PM me or, or ask me, okay? So if you have no questions anymore, so this is it. 
this is what the necklace is all about. So take note of the moral lesson in the story. That's what is more important in understanding this lesson. Okay? Be contented of what you have for now. But if there are room, if there, or if there is still room for improvement, grab that opportunity to achieve the best version of yourself. Thank you so much. See you in our next synchronous class. Goodbye.